we have something that we didn't wrap up yet. Okay, which is the traversal part. And this is also the thing that makes binary search tree different from other data structure that is specifically designed to facilitate the searching process. Because the other data structure cannot do that, cannot do this, okay, the traversal. There are three types of traversal, the order, pre-order, and post-order. So what is, is this about? What, what does it mean by saying something that's in order or pre-order? Uh, I guess when you are thinking about the definition of this, there's no need for you to memorize anything. You just need to think of three nodes. Three nodes. That's a BST, right? Three nodes of a BST. We know that the BST is featured by the specific order given the three nodes with this relationship as a parent and the left and the right child. See, suppose this has a value of 70. Its left child has to have a value that's smaller than its parent. And its right child of 70 has to have a value that's bigger. Okay? So when it comes to the traversal of the three different types, the in order just means in order which starts from the smallest left child first, then parent, then right child. That's what it means by saying in order. And it will literally return a sorted linear data structure if you do this. You print this first, this second, this third. That's what it means by in order. Then what it means by pre-order. Everything has to do with this parent node. If you say pre-order, that means the parent needs to go as the first node when you are trying to printing something or returning something. Then the pre-order, this has to be one. Then the other will follow. That's pre-order. The post-order is the opposite. The parent will go as the last node. So you would have this as one, this as two, this as the last one. That's what it, it means by post-order. Okay, let's dive deep into in-order traversal so you'll get a better sense. There's no need to memorize the definitions of this. In-order traversal. Okay. This is a given tree. You can use this as an example. Can we can we generate an algorithm that traverses the whole tree and print out print out the value of each node? So you can have a linear data structure that is fully sorted. Or say you can print everything out by increasing order. Can we do that? That's what in order is aiming to achieve. This is a root 50. What do we need to do? Wouldn't we want to go as far left as we can to start. Okay, before you start, let me remind you something first. First, this is a tree structure, right? Before you ever attempt iterative solution, it's better that you always start thinking whether recursive solution would work in a given tree data structure. Typically, recursion works better on tree. Okay, that's the first thing. Then the second thing, second thing is you're given the root. You're given the root. When you are applying this method in order traversal to the root, it doesn't necessarily mean it will not be applied to other nodes. If you apply recursion to it, you should also think that 
What if it happen if this is no? Okay. What do you suggest us to do? Um, in that case, I would say we should make the edge cases first. Edge case first. What is the edge case? Something along the lines of, um, well, for one, making sure that the node even has children. Because um, if the node that we're using is a leaf node, then we can just return that. Yeah, if it doesn't have a child, then there's no need for you to move up, right? Okay, let, let me do this. Let me make a, well, I think we have enough space here. Maybe we just stick to it. Okay, the edge case probably if node not equal to now, what do you do? Well, I'm sorry. You are saying that node is now. Is that what you are saying? Um, I was saying that like the children were null, but that would also be another edge case that we could use. So I don't know if it necessarily matters the order. Okay, you're saying that if the node doesn't have any children, uh, let me ask you a different question. Then. So what's the different thing you would be doing to a node that doesn't have a child and a node that has two children or has one child? What do you do to each node? It just prints its value, right? Am I right on that? Yeah. It just prints its value. So is there, so if there's no difference, uh, what edge cases are we dealing, dealing with here? Even any node, we just print out its value. Don't we want to check, uh, sorry. Don't we want to check if it has a left leaf node and then it would be the smallest for in order? You are thinking iteratively. Mm. As you see here, this should be applied to every node. So what can we do to each node and generalize a solution that runs recursively on every node? So you don't have to think Oh, I have to print out the nodes on the very left side first. That's iterative thinking. Can we do something? Then the order will be built inside your recursive solution. How does the recursion say? Not sure if you ever learned this before. If you didn't learn recursion, that might be difficult to explain, but we, we did touch it before. Because this method is named in order traversal, right? If I'm calling to in order traversal here, underneath this method, on its left and its right, how do you think this would be executing? On the left first every time, because it reaches, it reads the left and then calls that function again. So this has to be this first line has to be fully executed before you ever reach the second line, right? Mm -hmm. Which means you have to print out everything on the left subtree. Does that give you any hint uh, why you don't have to think about the very node sitting on the left side? Is if you put it in this order, naturally you will hit this node first, right? Mm -hmm. Any confusions here? Questions? This still comes back to the very basic thing, which is how your method or function, whatever your code executes from the very top to the bottom, from the left to the right. It's so simple, yet it's difficult to understand. 
if you call this on uh, its very left, then this will trigger on um, trigger another two different in order traversal. And this will be called upon a node dot left dot left. Then this here will, will be another the right, uh, I'm sorry, left dot right. Then when you are looking at the execution of this, you will ignore the second line. You will focus your attention on the first one. Then this will trigger another, another, as, as always, you will focus your attention on the very left side, which will reach 20 in the end. Okay, so questions on this? We are not really solving it. We are still talking about, we don't have to think iteratively. If you put your recursive code like this, to the same method on different lines, then it will be executing this order. It will naturally hit 21st. Okay, and then it will hit another node that you want. In this case, this may not be the right order because if you do it like this, this will hit something else that, that you may not want to happen. Okay. So for each node, what do you do? Let's focus on this. You want to you want to print its value out, right? Let's just make another method called display. What do we do to each node? Want to print its values out? Can we assume that the node in exists? Yeah. Yeah, maybe not. As we just uh, glossed over on um, the thing, there's not really any edge cases here. There's not really any edge cases because you do the same thing to every node. You print everything out. The only extreme case is when a node doesn't exist. So if n is now, what do you do? We don't do anything. You can just return semicolon, that's it. Otherwise, you print it out. You print out its value. Uh, I forgot what is the print, maybe this in Java system dot print. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't touched Java for a while. Let's do a print line. Okay. And dot key. Maybe vol. Whatever that is. It's the same thing that you do to every node. First you check whether it exists. If it doesn't, no bother doing anything. You just simply return nothing. Otherwise you print out its value. That's it. So we know that there is no edge cases and we want this traversal to happen to every node. Then what do we do? What, what, what do we do up here? And there needs a main method. Wouldn't you just display it under the main method? Or did you just display it? And then it's a main method. Where do you want to put the display? Uh, put it before you put any of the, um, well, oh no, never mind. Okay, let's see if I put display here. What? Would that entail? Wouldn't that be displaying the root? Let's see. Let's get rid of the root. This is applying on everything, every node. When the method is being called on the root, that's what the root, that's what the traversal would really happen. Right now, it's being applied to every node. If we just do display first, 
Let me just do this first. Then in order traversal uh, node left. And a node right. What does this entail? What order does this give you? When you call this method, giving the parameter as a root, what would happen? Which node would be printed out if you look at this tree? Of course, 50. And then which one? Left, 31. And then which one? 20. It has to be 20. Note that they are in order, like one line after another. So this is not done yet in 20. Is this what you want for in order traversal? Print everything in increasing order? No, it's not in order because you print 50 first before you print 31. How do we reconcile the difference here? Wait, uh traversal left first, then display, then right? You are saying that we switch the order. We, we do the traversal first on the left child. Then we call display. Then we call traversal again on its right child. How yeah. does that work? OK. Uh, this is too difficult to write. Just call note dot left. Okay, then display. Note. Then in order traversal. Again, uh, note dot right. Okay, how does this work? What order does this give you? Which node would you hit first if you do this? The uh, farthest left node. The farthest the left end node, which is 20. Why? Um, because since it's um, recursive, it's going to keep calling in order transversal over and over again, which is just going to keep moving um, the, uh, I guess the current node, it's going to keep moving that current node all the way over until um, yeah, Until there's that's no more left. Child. That's a great answer. Yeah, there are three lines, right? Note that this is recursion, so you have to fill, fully finish the execution of line one before you ever touch line two. And line one would trigger another three lines like this. Um, different things. If you want to want me to write it down, then that will be note dot left dot left. And note dot left, note dot left, dot right. Okay. Line one will trigger us. Same as what you just see, the other two lines, there are three lines here. Two and three in this case will not be running the same. It will focus your attention on this. This will trigger another three lines. It will ignore the other two until you hit the very bottom where you cannot go further, which this display will be triggered. Okay, so essentially, you will print out a 20 first. Then, in the same very bottom call of the three lines, you will move to the second, which you will print out 20, because it's left doesn't have anything, it's a null. Then 20 will be printed out. Then you will move to the third line, which is display being called on null, then you would do nothing. You simply return and finish it. So in the end, you'll print out 20. As a first node. Then you would move your attention to this because the order of these three lines. You display the very node as a parent, 31 of the 20. Then you move to the next one. 
here's the tricky thing to think through, which is why the heck I don't print out 41 first, instead I print out 32. Why? Because it needs to finish going left, and the only way it does that is hitting our edge case, which is equaling null. Okay. Yeah, you are on the right track. Think about if the very node is 41 being called. You will have an order here, right? In order here on 41's left. Then you will have display. Display. This is node 41. Okay? Then you will have another in order traversal that's being called on 41's right child. Same as the old story, which line gets executed first? Always the first one. So 41 will not be executed. You have to execute it thus on 41's left child, which is 32. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Questions on this? Questions? Um, this is just kind of a hypothetical. Would our algorithm work if the 36 at the bottom was a 49? How come you put 49 here? Is this still a binary search tree? Yes, it is. It is a binary tree. But no, it's not. This is a binary search tree, right? All the nodes on the left side, or say the nodes in the left subtree has to be smaller than its root. Does it meet the, the requirement for 41? No, it doesn't. 49 is on the left subtree of 41. It violates the very basic property of BSD, so it can't happen. You can't put 49 here. If you put 40 here, that would happen. That would, yeah, you would be able to put 40 here. Does that answer your question? Yes, sorry, thank you. Any other questions on this? Don't be sorry. Yeah, all the questions are great. Should have your questions answered. There are no just, stupid questions. Go ahead. This is just understanding how it works. It like, for instance, the first recursive ask task of like node.left, I'm just talking about this for now. It knows to stop once it hits like that null node or it like moves yes. beyond. Yeah. Okay. Once it hit display, it will know when to stop. Because yeah. the very node is now then you end silently. Yeah. Questions on this? Need you to understand this, especially if you didn't learn recursion in 145. And you have to be good at recursion because that's almost half of what you can do on a lot of things. It's either iterative or recursive. Are we good on this? What if it was a, uh, what if say that 36 was equal to 41? Or is that not a binary tree anymore if there's two? That violates the basic property of binary tree, binary search tree, uh, as we put the assumption that we use is conventional, which is a binary search tree should contain only unique values. Okay. Any questions on this? If you don't want to speak, you can type things out. I, I can see. Sometimes I may not be able to see that in time. Okay, I'll just assume that you're good on this. I'll move on. This is the in order traversal. If you want to go through one, one tree like this, this is what it will already happen. You meet 20, 20 print it out, 31, and the whole right subtree. 
starting with its left subtree. Then you print 32 first, then the whole right subtree of 32 because it doesn't have a left tree. Then this tree would be printed out, then you would come back to 41 because you are done with this left subtree. Then the whole left subtree of 50 would be done, you move to 50. Then you print out the right subtree in the same order. Okay. Uh, last question um, in order traversal. If you get this, you would be able to get the other two because I'm not gonna explain the other two in the same detail as this. All good. Okay. Are we gonna go over the time complexity of it? What's the time complexity? Helping other traversal. I didn't plan oh, to go M? through this. Yeah, I didn't plan to go through this as you should be very much capable of doing this yourself now. This is the end. Why? Because it prints every uh, node. Yeah, it, you need to print out every node. So you need to traverse every node. Okay. okay. You may wonder, so this may seem dumb. Why do we need to do this uh, on a binary search tree? Or why do we have a binary search tree in the beginning? Think about you have a data structure that is dynamically changing, it's dynamically changing, and you have frequently have the need to pull out some nodes, to pull out some nodes. And sometimes you have the need to sort it. In this scenario, it's better for you to have a BSD rather than a linear data structure, rather than you have an array. Because for an array, if you want to do something, uh, you have to give it an order, then you have to sort it. That's always runs on big N of login. Then if you have many nodes to be inserted, then you almost run on N multiplied N login. That will be very expensive. But for tree, insertion will only be logging. You can insert as many as you want. In the end, you just need to sort it for once. And then that will be plus on end. This will be faster in the scenario I just gave you then and linear data structure. Questions? Are we good on this? Okay. Pre-order, print out the note first, note val notes value. Post-order, print out the notes value as the last one. Okay.